What's up and welcome to the Creature Cast, the official console creatures podcast. I'm your host today, Steve Vegvari. And alongside me, just myself for right now. But that being said, this is gonna be a very special episode of the Creature Cast because we are welcoming back two members of the Obsidian Entertainment team. Both Carrie Patel and Gabe Paramo are joining us once again off the heels of the Xbox Game Showcase, in which uh they j- unveiled a brand new trailer of avowed this is the story trailer so this is the first time they're really getting into setting up the story as well as some other interesting aspects of the game then carrie patel went on to the official xbox podcast to do a deep dive of the game full 25 minutes if you're really into avowed as i am i highly encourage everyone go check it out very insightful they talk about everything from the story to that's where they uh, confirmed hey We're doing a third-person mode for the game. So, again, uh, a lot to unpack, but that being said, we brought Carrie and Gabe back onto the show to talk about everything that's been revealed in the past week or so, and it's a very awesome conversation. I really appreciate them taking the time talking to us right ahead of this game coming out later this fall. They are still sticking to that target specific release date still unknown but that being said we're getting close to the release of avowed i can't wait i love obsidian entertainment very very dearly i think them kind of going in and saying hey we're going into the pillar series extracting some characters bringing them over into this very new uh first person rpg that you know obsidian is known for going back all the way to fallout new vegas a game i hold near and dear to my heart outer worlds it's all great stuff so yeah i think it's a very interesting conversation we're gonna have we're gonna be swapping over to my conversation my interview with carrie and gabe uh but i really wanted you guys to kind of get some context as to what our conversation is going to be all about and just say hey we appreciate you tuning into this episode it's a very special one i really love the fact that carrie and gabe came back onto the episode after joining us right off the developer direct they came on talked about the game so uh, yeah, I really appreciate Xbox, Obsidian Entertainment, and uh, yeah, Carrie and Gabe. With that being said, we are switching over to our interview. Uh, if you love this interview, if you want more of this stuff, please consider following us, subscribing to the podcast, and uh, yeah, we appreciate you, and we'll see you on the other side. Thank you, guys. See ya. First, Carrie, Gabe, thank you guys for, for joining me. Uh, it's been, what now, a few months since the last time we spoke, and now it, it seems like now we're running into this cadence where every time you guys have this <laughs> new major uh, spotlight light uh right after an xbox event come on board and then chat with me so I, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to do that uh i guess to kick things off let's talk about this new story trailer that you guys premiered uh i i think for me it really did a phenomenal job not only setting the stakes of uh about but then also kind of cementing this you know what, what everyone expects from uh an obsidian game which is choice uh you know it sets up this whole thing where you know you're investigating this plague while leaving players with a sense of you know how you're going to uh approach it and what what the sense of urgency is can you talk about what that choice is in terms of previous choices that obsidian have kind of given players in previous games So we like to create, you know, worlds that are rich with nuance. Um, And that's one thing that it's always, it's always satisfying and heartening to see how players invest and dig into that stuff. Um, And so what we really wanted to tell players with this story trailer, and I'm, I'm really glad that, you know, you're calling it out is, you know, you're sent to the living lands with what feels like a fairly straightforward mission. You know, there is this soul plague called the dream scourge. It's wreaking havoc. We need to stop it. And that's absolutely true. Um, But there's a bit more going on. And what we hear from uh, a couple of the other characters that we talked to in the trailer, um, Inquisitor Ludwin, who has that awesome mask, and then our companion Giada, is that there are some different perspectives on what else is going on behind and beyond the dream scourge what may be causing it, um, what other problems and tensions that may you know, be leading us to overlook, and what sort of stance the players should take and what kind of future they should chart for the living lands. So, you know, as with most of our games, um, 
you know, the player is put in the unique position of being someone who has, you know, abilities and insights into the world around them that make them a key decision maker. Um, in Pillars and Deadfire, they were the watcher. So they could see souls, see into the beyond in a way that other characters couldn't, and they could perceive these unique truths about the mystery of the gods. Um, in Avowed, you're the envoy of Adir, and so you have um, a unique political role that not everybody in the living lands is going to be really warm to, um, but you also, you're a godlike, and so you have a connection to something deeper and more mysterious in the world. Now, you don't know who's godlike you are, so that's one of the threads that you're going to pull on and one of the mysteries that you're going to explore over the course of the game, um, but you are set up with a connection to something bigger and deeper and stranger um, that also gives you unique insight as to how you might be able to stop this plague. No, that's a, that sounds amazing, and I'm already sold on all of that. Um, actually, you you brought up Inquisitor Ludwin, and I thought that was a, an amazing call out just to kind of like introduce a character to, especially fans of Pillars. What what are the decisions like to kind of go through, look at the back catalog of characters that you can pull from from this this IP, the series, and then say, okay. Inquisitor Ludwig is the one that we're going to pull over. We're going to flesh her out and kind of uh, expand on her role in Avowed. What, what's that whole process like for the team? Yeah, so I mean, one of the great things is that, you know, we have a lot of people on our team who are returning devs from Pillars 1 and Deadfire. Um, Pillars 1 was my first game at our studio. And again, a lot of people on the team have a lot of experience with those games. So there's already um, kind of a deep mental catalog of what topics, characters, themes, you know, and plot lines we've explored before um, and where we can either, you know, bring something back that'll be, um, you know, a, a welcome cameo to returning players, but, you know, still fresh for new players um, and where we can add a, a twist to something that maybe we've shown a little bit of before. So, um, Without getting too deep into the details just yet, you know, Inquisitor Ludwin is a paladin. And so she is fanatical and zealous about her beliefs, which I think comes across a little bit in her in trailer introduction. Um, but yeah, in in the uh, in her the side quest where she appears in Deadfire, she is a member of the Steel Garrote, which represents this um, sense of order. Um, it's very devoutly Wudokan, you know, very laws and oaths above all. Um, and we realized that was a really fun and interesting order to, you know, place in the living lands and to explore in contrast with the themes of chaos and wild growth and, you know, just sort of this idea of, you know, things taking what shape they may, you know, you've got kind of this, um, you know, one one mode of life, one way that the living lands, you know, and its its inhabitants, its flora, its fauna have developed, and then another very different uh, perspective that you know Ludwig represents as kind of an extreme. So so for us, that was a a great character, not only because there's something very iconic about her design, and you know, she's someone who we've spent just enough time with to be really intrigued by, um, but you know there's there's still more to explore with her um but yeah thematically character wise she offered a lot of contrasts with the other characters and um ideas that we're showcasing in avowed no that's awesome uh one thing that i noticed in the new trailer was and maybe i've missed this in previous ones but there it seemed to be an emphasis on platforming in this one where you see your character jumping from you know in, in between gaps and dodging you know spinning blades and stuff like that was that was that a chosen, like a deliberate decision to kind of showcase that in this trailer specifically? Has that been showcasing before? Maybe I've just kind of missed it. Um, I mean, we definitely, uh, I don't know if we've really talked about it previously, but like we have a parkour system. So uh, really a goal of ours was to uh, allow for the player to give a little bit more freedom and movement. And I think one of the problems we were trying to solve is sometimes in first person games, um, you know, things that are below camera height, you know, you can kind of stumble yeah. and get stuck on. Um, and so we wanted to say like, if you're pushing forward on like a fence that you can just kind of like hop right over it and we'll have like a mantle or like you can kind of see some more organic um, environmental pieces and then you can kind of hop on top of that and, and kind of get your way on you know, on top of maybe objects that, you know, we try to be intentional with most of it, but it's pretty flexible to to let the player try things and see if it, if it works and if they can get an advantage uh, of, uh, of on the encounters in a more strategic way. Yeah, if, yeah. That, if yeah. that is their play style. Yeah, we're not we're not pushing like a, a mirror's edge experience where yeah. it's you know all about 
ping-ponging around the environment. Um, but, you know, as Gabe said, it it really lets us build a lot of interesting verticality into levels and, um, you know, create opportunities for players to kind of see a thing, work out how to get there, and reward their own curiosity. Yeah. No, for, no, especially for me, I'm thinking, you know, just the possibilities of going through an area and having that, you know, that mental check of, okay, how am I going to overcome this obstacle? This is a new kind of thing that I'm, I don't think a lot of players are used to in these types of games. Usually, you know, it's kind of more linear or diverging paths. It's not, am I going to die if I just don't make yeah. this jump? <laughs> so I, I really like that. It's it's definitely something we've iterated on with our our levels and our content design and in our dungeons in particular because you know especially in first person it's it's very easy if that stuff is too challenging and not just perfectly tuned um, for the experience to feel very frustrating especially if like parkour is not your primary mode of gameplay um, so it's definitely something that we've worked to make sure that it's something that feels you know that it's it's a mechanic players can use it's something where they can you know see a thing and then go try to do a thing but it's not something that they have to you know acutely hone their reflexes to time it at yeah. just the right millisecond to make a jump or else they can't complete a level of course yeah uh i i, I would be remiss not to talk about it, but something that fans are very excited about third person mode i mean the community humorously debates first person third person which is the best way to play these games um why why now why why reveal this now was this something that was maybe not in the game to start with was there a deliberate choice to show it now uh you know m just a few months before release um yeah so it had it, it had to be a deliberate choice at least uh like a uh, way you know in the, a few years back but because we the way that it's set up is essentially it's it's duplicated animations right so the way that it, that first person works is you kind of see the floating arms right yep. and you kind of you make that you make sure that that all feels good and that the systems and all the gameplay is working well and then you kind of have to take a step back and go okay yeah we're you know there's feedback that's feeling like hey I, I'm, I'm not a, a first person player i get motion sick right what can we do here and we we did really value kind of that um making sure that we're providing um that sort of that feeling for the player to help solve some of those problems, um, and so and so going back and and revisiting some of our features to include um, third person, make sure that it feels good there as well. We kind of had to do you know almost like dual work there to to support that throughout the game. So it's not something that we just were able to just like flip flip a switch on um, like it late in the game you know based off late late game feedback. Like we really we did have to value that pretty pretty upfront. Um, I will be clear, it is a first person game with a third person perspective. So it's not like you're going to switch to third person mode and it's going to all of a sudden feel like uh, Devil May Cry or something, right? Like <laughs> it's still, it's going to, it's going to feel, it's going to move and feel and play like a first person game with a, with the perspective that's letting you see your, your player character. Of course. And, and with that in mind, I mean, it really does feel like, or it seemed like that you guys emphasize creating that first person mode, finalizing, refining that, and then yeah. kind of building that from there because i can just imagine that some of the animations whether it's the the combat animation the movement and stuff like that is curated for that first person perspective yeah. were there any tr like specific troubles or like hurdles when kind of approaching the third person um well yeah i mean with the we did definitely we had to prioritize first person and make sure that's all feeling good and i believe the first person timing um, we we wanted we it, we made a system where the first person timing was the king, and we had to insert and and do and have the animators do the best they could to make sure that that it, that the third person is matching as much as possible to the first person. Um, that was super important to us, and that we made systems like a timeline that that almost kind of enforced it, where like that way the designers when they're setting it up they can kind of see if there's any mismatches between first person and third person um, right there in the editor and. Um, Again, to try to make sure we're we're that the animators have made they've taken into account the proper timing um, that that we had to care about for first person. So yeah, yeah, I I can't imagine how many uh, revisions or you know how how many <laughs> yeah. people have to oversee that process. It sounds very uh, overwhelming, but I'm glad it worked out because I know that a lot of people were uh, very eager to see a third person mode in the game. So I'm happy that you know players can now celebrate that. Uh, I know I, I saw a lot of people. Uh, hooting and hollering when uh, when Carrie you you reveal that during the the Xbox podcast that was a pretty big moment. Um, yeah, the the new gameplay the the new showcase kind of showed off this new area. I think really went into a deep dive of this new area. I, I think out of all the locations we've seen so far, this is 
probably the one that stands out to me. I love how uh, illuminated it is at night. You've got like the different like uh, you know fluorescent mushrooms and the different like little mushroom guys that you're attacking and everything. Uh, what can you talk about the the art style and like the art properties that go into this to kind of define this area as opposed to like other ones we've seen in the past? Yeah. So. All of the regions of the living lands are going to have some of these fungal elements that, as you noted, look really striking at night. Um, it's, yeah. you know, something that kind of ties everything together. And there are certain fungal elements that also tie back to the dream scourge. If you kind of saw the more the gunky mycelial mass that's sort of coagulated around some spots. Um, but yeah, um, the kind of I think some of the most striking things about Emerald Stair in particular are those animancy devices. Um, they have this purple glow, kind of purple, sort of the color that we've themed. You know, a lot of you know essence and soul related um, miscellany around in Avowed as well as in Pillars and Deadfire. And so you know, one of the uh, one of the things that makes you know Emerald Stair and the lore kind of unique is that. Uh, the region was settled by these um, Valian, Valian expats, um, a lot of animancers, but also regular folks as well. Um, not everyone's going to be a soul scientist, but they've used animancy in order to help farm their fields. So you'll see these devices um, strung throughout these farming terraces. Those have the little purple glow on them. And, you know, what it does is it sort of concentrates and supercharges um, the essence in those, in those terraces um, to really make the crops, you know, grow quickly and bountifully. Um, they're experiencing their own problems with the dream scourge and so by the time the player arrives some of that has backfired but um, those terraces and those those little glowing implements are part of what gives the region a really distinct um, visual identity uh, and you know in addition to the the parts of the region that we saw we've got some other sub biomes as well including a uh, a swamp area um, in one corner of the map that the team's been working on that um, you know just adds a bit more variety to everything mm. Yeah, no, I can't. I can't wait to see it all and see how it kind of interconnects and intertwines. Um, I, I, I do want to clarify something. So we see we see this area, the Emerald Stair, at night. Is there a, like a day and night cycle that will then um, show it during the day that we can explore and see it in like a whole different light, so to speak? There is a full day night cycle, so Got you it. can you can sit in one spot and watch the sun rise and set. Amazing. Yeah, I can't wait to see the visual differences between those two. I, I think it will be very, very striking. So um, uh, the other thing that I, I, I noticed that was uh, shown off during the uh, showcase was that uh, now the skill trees are being fleshed out a little more by, by the team. You know, we, we're seeing the fighter, ranger, wizard, the, the godlike. Uh, how can I know the last time that you guys were on and, and talking to us that you were talking about how players have this uh, ability to mix and match and kind of tailor their experience on their play style and what their preferences are. Can you kind of go a little more in depth now that we're kind of talking about these various uh, skill trees that you can start unlocking? Uh, yeah, so we really tried to make sure that um, like the mechanics that we're providing the player, like the weapons, the tool, the toolkit, um, the toolbox that they have that we're, we're sort of allowing the, the player, the, 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 ability trees, sorry, the ability trees to try to um, enhance those elements in terms of how they are cate categorized, right? So, um, you know, the fighter, right? We Like that, that's a class from Pillars, but this is a classless game, but we wanted to like grab some elements of kind of fighter slash bar barbarian kind of feeling where it's more about pa uh, power and being close up and and maybe blocking and, and getting improvements to the medium and heavy armor uh, as well as kind of enhancing 2h melee weapons that are more heavy um, and as well as like uh, increasing you know um, other bits of power on, on the player and then as well as like the ranger tree which is more about agility and range like guns and bows um, stealth and then a crowd uh, crowd control um, you know, like like having the ability to tangle foot um, and and kind of stop quicker enemies in their tracks. But then as well as showing more of like just how much we've been developing into the feeling of wizard, where wizard uh, and pillars is all about managing all your spells uh, and and allowing the player to find grimoires, which are are kind of their tool to um, you know each grimoire can have uh, up to four spells and and multiple spells and and they can execute those kind of quickly on the fly. But then having um, uh, the wizard tree give the player the ability to uh, memorize, I guess you could say, memorize those uh, those skills, so then they don't even require those um, spells. Sorry, so that they don't even require that grimoire anymore, um, and they they continue to just be uh, like this this wizards that's just like flinging spells left and right, um, as well as improvements to their 
their you know their essence and uh and their health and, and all that stuff so yeah yeah no, that sounds that sounds unreal, and I know that you guys are keeping the the godlike uh, skill tree and ability pretty close to the vest, and I I think that's that's a great decision. I I, I can't wait to kind of unpack that on my own when, once you start playing the game. Um, starting to to round out our conversation um, for this time, I, I'm curious though, is there going to be a photo mode in this game? Can you talk about it at all? Because I'm just thinking to myself as I go through these trailers, I'm like, oh, that, that Vista looks really nice. That enemy looks great. I, you guys, uh, can you guys talk about that at all? No no pressure, at, I don't, obviously. I don't, I Not don't yet. Have the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, and uh, yeah, the, I guess the, the last one, um, just kind of giving you guys the floor, uh, is there anything that we haven't really talked about that you guys are excited about coming out of this new showcase that, uh, and then the uh, Xbox podcast deep dive as well? From the from the from the podcast, the official Xbox podcast, um, definitely was super excited that we we're finally to sh able to share. You know that, look, you know we're a game with RPG mechanics and and systems, right? We right. have ability trees and attributes, right? Where we have six attributes, where the you know we've got might, constitution, dexterity, perception, intellect, and resolve. And these are like these are attributes that come from pillars. They 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 are our spin on it in terms of how they they are influenced by a more action oriented uh, game RPG. And and so, um, you know, you're going to be able to improve your carrying weight and your damage and your resistance to bleed and poison and, and uh, elements like that. But as well as being able to show that we've also got gear with stats and and uh, the ability to upgrade your gear between uh, regions. And we kind of hinted uh, at enchanting, but we haven't really shown off that um, as well. And sort of how Pillars is pretty known for their unique gear and kind of how that feels and they in their unique enchantments, which, again, I'm super excited to uh, when the players gets their hands on this uh, later this year to be able to um, find all the uniques that we've made and, and kind of find what they want to mix and match and feel like their play style or their player fantasy is going to be. So, yeah. Amazing. Hey, Carrie, yeah. how about yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited that we got to show off a little bit more about our companions in the podcast episode. Um, I really loved that we got to see and show players the way they sort of interact and talk with each other. And even just as they're bantering in conversation, you get, you know, a slice of their very different outlooks and personalities. So I'm looking forward to players discovering more of that as we go forward. Yeah, likewise. Uh, very exciting stuff. I know you guys are still targeting uh, fall 2024. Cannot wait. And I know a lot of people out there, the community uh, is like me, cannot wait for this. So again, Carrie, Gabe, thank you guys so much for, for joining me to, for this conversation. I hope, I hope for another one in the, in the future. Appreciate you guys taking the time and it's, it's always a pleasure. Likewise, it was great yep. to talk to you. Thank you. And that about does it for this very special episode of the Creature Cast. Once again, thanking uh, Carrie Patel, Gabe Paramo for joining me once again, talking about Avowed coming out later this year, fall on Xbox, PC. Uh, it's going to be a great time. I hope you guys are excited for the game as much as I am. Uh, but yeah, subscribe to the feed. Leave us some reviews on this. If you guys are keen to see more interviews, please let me know because I'm I'm keen to do them. I'm, I'm keen to get some developers on here, chat about their upcoming games, and share in the passion that all of you guys have for these upcoming games. Uh, but yes, yeah, keep up with Console Creatures. You can check out the website, consolecreatures.com. You can keep up with me everywhere across the internet, at SVicvari. Uh, I'm going to be putting up little, little segments of this interview as well. If you guys want to uh, check those out on TikTok, Instagram, definitely go and check those out. But again, appreciate you all for tuning in. And until next time, we'll see ya. Bye.